Estamos con Jill Oban, fundadora, directora general y presidenta de Virgin Unite yeah, y es autora de Partnery, a su book. Uh, Jean, welcome to this conversation with us. Thank you, Alejandra. It's lovely to be here. Okay, Jean, uh, in your book, Partnering, you say that l lasting partnerships are the foundation of meaningful life and the backbone of any successful organization. How are those lasting partnerships achieved? So, uh, lasting partnerships are something that all of us can do, but we very rarely do. Like with companies right now, they tend to be more transactional than relational. But if we turned that upside down and looked at what we could give to the world through our partnerships, rather than thinking about what we can get from our partnerships, it changes the whole framing. And how they're built, when we interviewed about 65 plus of incredible partnerships in the world, and found they had these commonalities and these common patterns. And some of them were things like having a common purpose, like something bigger that the partnership was going for helped keep the partnership together and being all in. So 100% having each other's backs, no matter what you're going through. And then the other one was called celebrate friction. So learning how to lift above friction and to make it something that actually you find a third way from that friction, a better way than either of you came into the partnership with. You, you talk about friction. It's something that for most people is difficult to, to manage and it's actually difficult to talk about, about it in, in, in partnerships. What is the best way to, to approach friction and to make a good thing out of friction? Yeah, and what's really interesting, before I did these interviews, I found friction, this is the hardest one for me, that that friction is actually the thing that made them better people and made their organization great. And with friction, always coming into a conversation and, and asking yourself the question, what if the other person's right? So you don't come in in a defensive way, you come in in a way that's more open-hearted. Or always thinking about why, like why is that person coming from there? So it's having that empathy. But then always figuring out when you come together and have friction, what is that third way that's better than either of your ways? Not competing with each other, but competing with oneself to make yourself a better person and using that friction to help you do that. Jean, in, an, in an interview, you mentioned that no one achieves anything great by working alone. However, this is a great challenge because we live in a society that encourages individualism. How can we beat this man of the superhero, the lonely CEO? In many of our companies right now, we're so focused on short-term profitability that it becomes transactional and not relational. But we have a chance to look at our companies and think about how do we change our incentive structures? Um, how do we change how we value people, how we rate people at the end of the year, how their bonuses are structured, so that they're focused more around a collective approach and a team approach. One of the most difficult things in organizations is to disagree with others and express it openly. How to disagree with others without generating friction while at the same time strengthening the bond and relationship? And this is a super difficult one because whenever you're in disagreement, you feel that emotion, so you want to react. So I think the first thing is constantly pausing and having one of the things they talked about a lot was having safe spaces so that you could have those conversations. Like Airbnb has an amazing safe space where they bring their team together and they call it elephants, dead fish, and vomit. Okay. And uh, so they- It's an interesting set of words. I know, I know. I never thought I would put those three words in one sentence. But it's, they bring the team together in a safe space and they allow people to talk about the elephants in the room that no one's talking about, the dead fish that everyone's talking about but no one's doing anything about, and the vomit of things that people just maybe need to get off their chest. And they talked about how doing that consistently creates this almost like this rhythm or this muscle of having really honest conversations. So you're not holding something back until it becomes a big disagreement. You're actually having that conversation. It's like a ongoing conversation where you're not frightened of the difficult conversation. Okay, Jean, thank you very much. This has been a very interesting conversation. Thank you for thank being Thank you, Alejandro. Thank you, guys. Thanks to Wobi. Okay.